very excited. I'm always very excited about the kiln loads. They're my favorite and not my favorite all at the same time. idea on this is that we are going to paint into these blonde spots the underglaze um, that corresponds to some of these bigger spots um, this all crawled and if I don't I, I, if I don't refire it then it's gone forever there are so many things that can cause crawling. To diagnose what's actually going on is really hard to do. I want everything to come out right the first time. Every time. <laughs> I'm in the wrong business for that. <laughs> So one of the things that everybody struggles with when um, re-glazing is how to get the glaze to stick to the already glazed surface because it's smooth and slippery. Um, and I have heard several things about um, hairspray and I have also heard spray starch. So I have both of those things on, on, um, on hand. I tried them both, and although I know the hairspray will help in certain situations, I really am liking the spray starch better. It seems to leave uh, uh, more of a tooth to the surface for the glaze to stick to. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see. The other thing that spray starch is really amazing at is if you have a glaze that is particularly um, powdery after you put it onto your um, bisquare, like you dip it and, and then it just powders off and gets all over your fingers and all over everything and it's hard to touch and it's hard to load into the kiln. Um, if you spray it with spray starch, all of that stops. It's like, Spray starch. The uh, best pottery studio um, item that you didn't know you needed. <laughs> this plate, the crawl went across the straight line and now the straight the line goes bloop and um so since the line goes bloop i decided to paint some underglaze onto the flower um thinking you know who knows maybe it will be the next best thing um but in other news the spray starch seems to be doing a really good job at um, holding on to the glaze while it dries because the glaze does not dry on top of the because the water has nowhere to go but evaporate so um, the, the spray starch is doing an incredible job you do have to get enough of it um, but you can feel that tooth um, on the on the pot and it seems to be doing a fantastic job. There are other methods um, you can just dip it let that dry it, all the glaze will slide off let that dry and then dip it again and that's another easy one. <laughs> pro tip there if you're using um, 
uh, white glue, watered down Elmer's glue as a resist, um, let it sit overnight. Now, don't get me wrong, it still resisted just fine. It still did everything that I asked it to do. Um, but the glaze didn't crawl off of it like you expect of um, a regular wax resist. It did crawl off of it after it um, had, I waxed the bottoms and then came back the next day. Uh, another kill mode. Man, it feels like I just did one. It's so exciting. <laughs> I'm producing! <laughs>so what's going on see this it's got pink on the back so this is the pink right under glaze and then my over glaze has lifted up has lifted up and you can see if I can get it close enough to the camera you can see space in between the overglaze and the underglaze and the bisque wear. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what's causing this to crawl. Now, here's the thing. This has been sitting for like two days. So it takes it like two days to do this when it's sitting. But it only takes a couple of minutes for it to do this in the kiln as this top layer dries out. What this means is that this is moving. As it dries, this glaze is shrinking. And as it shrinks, it's pulling the underglaze with it and it's losing its connection with the bisque plate. Crazy stuff. The good part is that on all of these, that doesn't seem to be happening. All of these new ones, I can look at it, I can touch it, and it does not seem to be in any way losing its connection to the bisque. Uh, so I think we can count on all of these coming out. I really do. And as far as this is concerned, these reglazes, we shouldn't have that problem at all with anything that's reglazed because it's already, you know, sure enough stuck down to the pot. So, and you can kind of see where this one, part of that was glaze application, but see down there at the bottom where it is um, kind of crackled? Well, that is, has pulled away from that pot. But it's not let go. It's still stuck to the pot. got everything in there except this one plate.
But the great thing is, I have figured out what's causing this. There's three parts to a glaze. There's the clay, the um, flux, and glass. And the clay is causing, I'm assuming it's the clay, is causing it to shrink as it dries. And so this crawling happens before it's ever fired. Before it's ever fired. And then as it is fired, um, the glaze pools. This did the same thing here. So, um, and in the inside here. So it's a loss. But great news on these. They either had a very thin coating of underglaze in between the bisque and the um, and the or or they were completely and totally bisque on. So I bisqued these, and you can see I was afraid it wouldn't cover, but I also was afraid of messing up my line right there. So it, I'm not really happy with that coverage, but. No crawling. So the amount of underglaze is on there as well. Our uh, refires, this is one of the refires that I did. And it took care of the dots. This obviously the color didn't take, or I don't know why the color didn't take quite quite right on that, but the color didn't take quite right on that. But it fired up fine. Um, this is a totally sellable piece. One. One. <laughs> um, this was a reglazed piece and it looks fantastic. And it is now, um, I, I have no qualms at all selling that. And same with this one. This was a reglazed re piece. This had crawling all over it. And it is, I have no qualms selling that. So those are great. This is great. So this, um, this had a thin layer of underglaze in between the glaze and the um, bisque because of the bisque coverage and it did have a little bit of crawling on it. Um, I don't know that I would call it. It almost looks, it's small enough that it looks like pinholes, but it's not. <laughs> this was a reglazed piece and I really loved the added color. And there's a really cool depth going on in there that I like. Um, this was a reglaze piece. Um, again, I don't know if I would, I don't know that I'd put that out to sell, but it is a reglaze piece. And this piece turned out great. No, no qualms with this piece at all. So uh, that goes. Um, okay, so, yeah, <clears throat> now to the black. This black is not a speedball black. It is a Mako Jet black. And, um, this kiln load got all the way to seven went past six and got all the way to seven and the black bled. Um, all the speedball glazes did great. But the black, not as bad on this one, but the black bled. 
So I'm gonna have to get my speedball black. Uh, Cause it's weird. It looks like a picture that's out of focus. Same here. Looks, looks like I put a picture on there and it's out of focus. That's the photographer me talking. <laughs> Last but not least, this had a crack in it. Remember how I told you we were gonna keep learning from this as long as it would teach us? And the crack was about that big. And I said I wanted to know how much the crack would open up after firing. So if you see like a little thing crack, you can go, oh yeah, I won't be a big deal. Or you can go, holy moly. <laughs> Holy cow! Check that out! Out of the 18 pieces that were in the kiln, I have nine that are good or on the fence. I don't really see any point in them taking nine photos and then doing a slideshow out of nine photos. <laughs> Uh, but um, thanks for coming and we will definitely, I, I feel very encouraged. Um, I feel very encouraged knowing what's been causing the um, crawling. Now that I know, I don't have to wonder anymore. The other thing I said I wanted to know was if this cracked because it was too thick. I did not trim enough away in the middle. It does not feel too thick at all. So I am going to go break this. I should probably wait for Tim to come. Curious though. <laughs> We're back to mud. Oh my gosh, I can't tell you how excited I am to be back in the mud. I can <laughs> Oops. Tim's home. <laughs>